previously on Balls. Hello? Mr. Locke? Yes. It's Darren and John and Simon and Kate on Balls Radio. How are you doing? I'm fine, Darren. How are you? I'm very, very good, thanks. What are you doing in Durban? Well, that's uh, part of a mission. Um, I'm currently uh, working with uh, Teletrack. I think you know the racing channel. Yes. 239. Um, basically, I, I'm looking after Kwasul and Natal, Port Elizabeth and the Western Cape mainly. Okay. And we're going to move nationally a little bit later. But uh, finding new presenters, training them, mentoring them, and looking at the presentation and okay. uh, organizational things that, that are going on, you know. So finally you guys have put Nico Kritsiotis and, and those guys out to pasture, huh? <laughs> Listen, I'm the guy that you go out to pasture, not them. <laughs> no, but Darren, you, you will understand that if I tell you, I, I, you went to the horses quite a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the most exciting thing at the moment is that we, we're going to about 45, 50 countries around the world every day with South African racing. So Amazing, our, yeah. Our thoroughbreds and jockeys and trainers are getting promoted all over the world. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and we've got uh, all the other countries coming in on the channel every day as well. So... Racing is booming. I, I do. And I mean, I do stumble across Teletrack every now and again, and I, I see racing from, as you say, all four corners of the globe, and, and it's fantastic because, I mean, South Africans can punt and bet on those, those races as well now. Well, and the biggest thing, quite frankly, is, is, is uh, the sports betting where the soccer pools yeah. have gone crazy. Yeah. Do you remember the Littlewoods pools in England? Yes. Pools? Yeah. Well, it's going to take the same course here in South Africa, without doubt. Absolutely. Are they doing the same? I know there was talk that uh, they want to do a similar kind of thing with rugby. Is that is that still in the in the planning? No, r- rugby's underway as well. Okay. Um, cricket, golf, you won't believe it. Uh, t- tennis is going to come into it, but uh, I, don't, I hate to think about that. <laughs> well, there we go. There goes Neil Andrews' uh, millions that he's making. That's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Neil Andrews, there's some lovely stories about him. I mean, remind me, Simon, sometime to share one or two of those. I would, I'd love to. Well, I mean, the one, the one particular one was when you were doing so when Spread started, actually with the Multi Choice Group and stuff mm, as well. Yeah. And uh, and Neil, obviously sick for the game, uh, decided to take a bet uh, spreads on um, on a Sri Lanka game. <laughs> I remember him piling on to Jaya Surya. He thought, no, this guy's going to just. Uh, he, it, I think it was against the West Indies. He thought, no, he's going to he's going to destroy them everywhere. And uh, he he had to go under a different name. Oh goodness me! Uh, and and the guy who took his call at the time was Nico Kritsiotis, his big mate. So, and they obviously record all the calls. So you, it's a very formal conversation between two guys. You normally, when they talk to each other, would just give each other absolute hell. Uh, <laughs> but there's this very formal conversation. Yes, Mr. Rule. Yes, okay, that's fine. Yes, Mr. And there's this bet going on. So he's laying on all these spreads. I'm just going high on Jaya Suri all the time. And oh, no. as he finishes his last spread. Jaisu, uh, the game's about to start. Jaisu walks out and edges one down the leg side, caught behind. <laughs> and all you hear afterwards is, oh dear, Mr. Rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some interesting stories. So now listen, how are you doing? No, wonderful. Uh, Dan, I, I, I thought it would be time to sort of slow down. Look, I had a very, a very, very uh, bad scare in my life. About I believe so. Years ago. What happened? No, well, it was, you know, we think now that it was either a psychotic attack, partially a, a dilemma, or a, a mild heart attack. But I was declared to have had dementia, which is non-recoverable. Uh, Jeez. And two doctors, government doctors, actually put in writing and, and, and declared me not fit to, to be anywhere but in a mental hospital. And they stuck me in a, an army hospital for two and a half months. Jeez. With the wrong medication. Um, and thank God for my special lady. I mean, she kept saying to them, look, guys, there's something wrong here because the symptoms don't match what you, you, you're giving him. Mm. Um, and so suddenly they started to take me off it. And um, I came back to normal, and now I feel better than I was before, which is wonderful. <laughs> wow, well, that's good news. Because, nice I mean, you see some of those movies where, this is a Jack Nichols, I won't feel under the cuckoo's nest, I think is where you can get into some of those places and you just never get out. Well... And it makes it worse. Apparently, two neurologists said that they're going to write a book about, um, they want one of their cases, and they said they think mine is top of the list. They reckon it's an absolute miracle that I've I've come back, and so it was to Helen back. Wow. Here I am. You're sounding great. You're sounding uh, sounding fabulous, and uh, yeah, sounding as as, as good as I remember. I remember the last time I bumped into you, I think it was Sun City, when you were, um, it was uh, something that tracked the ball flight in golf. Flight scope, that's the one, yeah. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, so. So I'm still involved in that. That's become a, 
the leading uh, sports technology of ball tracking in the world now. Mm, absolutely. Um, is, that, is that what they're using on, uh, on the American golf coverage now? Because I actually see them no, plotting. No, that's a different, no, that that a different that's thing. Different. Okay. Um, we were at the, at the Open Championship, All right. um, which was very exciting, and it's going to get developed even further now because it's getting even more sophisticated and it's wireless and you can take it around on a course with you and all that. So it's, it's, it's great fun. Yeah. And are you still living out in Stellenbosch, Martin? Yes, wonderful. Living there, um, is that John? No, it's uh, Simon. Simon Hill speaking, yeah. Hi. Hi. No, yes, um, I'm living at, uh, on the Dazalza Golf yes. Estate. Play just about nine holes just about every day. So when you guys are down, Darren, any time. Well, well, now we know where you are. We will definitely mm-hmm. track you down. Yeah. Cause, uh, the, way, the way Darren's playing at the moment, your house is in danger. A folding <laughs> cash, please, <laughs> Mr. Lock. Folding <laughs> cash, that's all I take. So, Martin, uh, you say you also spe- spent a little bit of time on the, uh, on the north coast? Um, the no- north coast of? Of, of? of KZN, did you? Um, no, no on, I'm on the east coast. On the east coast? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where Darren used to be. Yes, <laughs> okay, yeah. East, right. uh, on the East Coast. No, I'm looking out the window now. The Indian mm. Ocean, is, we've got these waves coming in, and I'm looking at Sky TV, and, and the, the waves coming in on the East Coast there, and it's a bit different. Yeah, but uh, apparently it's got big yeah. swells there, four to six meters or something they're talking about today in Durban. Sure. Yeah, no, no, it's sort of, look, when we landed, it was quite a risky landing. We were, we were all over the place in the wind. It was about 45 to 50 mm. uh, k's per hour. You know, it was really good blowing. Did you see Pat Simcox on his longboard? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't see him. Well. Now, listen, we, I mean, we were reminiscing a little earlier on, and I mean, these youngsters here that uh, you know that that missed some great no, great I, moments. I remember so, Martin, but from not, as, not as a DJ though. Oh no, not as a DJ. He no, no, no. no. I, mean, I said Martin also a DJ. You looked at me like what? These youngsters missed big chunks of South African history because you were a five FM DJ or Radio Five in those days, and of course, going back uh, RBC as well. Yeah, well, I first started with uh, on uh, as a DJ with uh, Radio Luxembourg. Really? Um, yeah, that was my biggest break. Um, I I just kicked off in uh, uh, Zimbabwe. Went to to London to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art for two years. Yeah. And while I was there, I was sort of spotted and picked and asked if I'd like to go on to Radio Luxembourg for a few months instead of going back to Rhodesia, as it was called then. Um, and that was my sort of big break. So, and it started with Rock With Rock. So when I tell you guys, but to tell you, I was rocking around with Bill Haley and, and Elvis <laughs> Presley. That's amazing. I didn't realize you'd done the Luxembourg thing as well. Uh, so, so Tony Blewett. Yeah, Tony Blewett was at, at Radio Luxembourg. After, right? after Martin would have been there, yeah. Uh, he, was after, uh, he was after me. Not yeah. much, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tony, Tony always still remind him that he was probably long before anybody else. Uh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. That's uh, Radio Luxembourg and then obviously RBC and then came down and, uh, and, and, and started it. You, did you do the radio well, thing before you, got, you started doing the TV thing on SABC? Uh, yeah, I did, I did radio. I, I had a few shows on, on um, Springbok or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the biggest, biggest break for me, if you guys remember, the Gallo Group, Gallo Records, Peter, Peter, Peter Gallo, Gallo yeah. and Eric Gallo. Yeah. We, my brother and I, because I was a DJ and sort of a bit like Alex J when I was about 19, mm. um, we opened a record bar. And I ended up with about 25 of these bars and, and, and got to 30-odd. And Gallo uh, had their own chain in opposition to us. And they were looking at us because they were the main wholesaler and they were seeing that we were buying more than them. <laughs> and suddenly they said, well, you know, why don't you guys fly to Johannesburg? We'd like to talk to you. So we went down there thinking, okay, well, if we can get 40% out of this, we'll do well. <laughs> we ended up 60-40. And I was chairman and MD at a very young age. And Peter Gallo and Eric were on the board. Mm. And that led to the most extraordinary thing that... Um, Peter must have put a word in, and they were looking for somebody to take over the CNA record chain and to run it. That's now that's 250 stores for yeah. a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was fantastic. Oh, was that's great amazing. five years in my life. What were those record chains that you had, by the way? Uh, that was Spin Along. Spin Along, okay. But uh, it, it was the, the CNA chain, obviously, was in, in, the, in, yeah. the, in the stores, and then I was headhunted by CBS. America to to run the gramophone record company in in, in Johannesburg um, for five years while I was doing my sports broadcasting. So it was it's been a busy life, but I don't know. It doesn't stop. Yeah. I'm very very happy, I must tell you. And uh, and very lucky as well. I mean, you know, some uh, it's, it's great to see that you're still you're still busy and, and doing all the stuff as well. And 
and uh, I, I know you've been, you've had a passion for horses for for quite a long time. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I love still it. think it's the most. Uh, I still think it's the the, the greatest sport, um, just from a stature point. I, I, in South Africa, it, it tended to. I don't know, it just tended to lose a little bit of its spark. It tended to have the same market that kept following it all the time. And I know they were looking at ways of trying to get new people to come to horse racing. Because I always said, when you, when you own a horse, which I was lucky enough to do, uh, going to the races and just watching the stuff, you know, regardless of the betting or not, it's such an awesome experience. You know, well, I, you know I've got a big problem. Horse racing, they always say, you know, it's, it's gambling, it's money. So, you know, the guys should take a good look at rugby and take a good look at cricket now yeah. and tell me, you know, what is the difference? Yeah. Because I, I honestly believe that I can go back to, to Mace Roberts, and you will remember Mace yeah, Roberts. Yeah, very well. I mean, Mace should have been Sportsman of the Year mm. when he won the British uh, Jockey Championship. Yeah. And Trevor Quirk and I, we, we punted for this, and we were told, oh, come on, it's not a sport, and... Absolute rubbish. And then Frankel comes along this year, this great horse. Absolutely. And suddenly the whole world's looking and saying, wow, look at this freak. Yeah. And he's wonderful, you know. And to me, I mean, I just spent uh, a week on the farm, one of the beautiful stud farms in, in, in the Cape. And, you know, watching these little babies born now, mm. and watching them grow into it and running and, and coming fast and becoming great horses in the world. We are bo- uh, breeding some of the best horses in the world now. It's amazing. Yeah. And, I mean, there were some before that. We had our own horse, Chestnut, and uh, there were cigars Absolutely. as well in between as well. And you can just go through the list of just some of these J- great... J. Pig and J. J. the Jet Plane. Oh, now. yeah. I mean, just, I mean, how they could actually... But I didn't realize they'd made that comment. That's just not a sport because I don't think there's anything more beautiful than watching a horse coming down the straight and, uh, you know, jockey on top and, 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 and crossing the finish line. I think it's just one of the most beautiful sights in any sport. Well, yeah, 100%. I tell you what I am doing that you might might interest you. Mm. Um, I said to Ken Rather, who runs uh, Telly Track, you know yep. that New Zealand ex captain. Yeah. Um, I said to him, look, I want to do something for the the young jockeys in this country because they they don't seem to be able to handle TV and, and the interviews very well. Mm. And so I said, look, part of my Telly Track thing, I want to go to the academy in in um, Summerfelt yeah. and train those little ones. And I'm, I'm now training these little ones coming through. And we've got blacks and coloreds and Indians and whites and all together there. And you will not believe it. I've got black girls as jockeys and colored girls that are winning races in South Africa, you know, in their early 20s, 18-year-olds. And to see this develop, Darren, is unreal. Yeah, that's fantastic. Actually, uh, I was just looking at the list of jockeys. I think one of the cards, uh, I was going through the paper while I was at the airport the one day. And uh, to see so many new names there, because, I mean, there was a time when it was the same jockeys over and over again. (laughs) But the nice thing is that there's also some of the... uh, Is Benny Little's kid a jockey now? Is that that the little I see there? Yes, he's he's riding. Yeah. I think a lovely story. Remember Basil Marcus, the little man? Yeah. Um, Well, he he is... His son now, Adam, is becoming a a very, very good trainer. Basil's just come back from a, a very successful stint in Hong Kong and Singapore where he was champion jockey for seven yeah. years. And um, I'm hoping to get him to come on to, to, to Terry Track as a guest presenter. Um, he's a fantastic guy. And uh, his brother, of course, Anton, is our leading jockey in the yeah. country. So in this family alone of, of young guys, you've got this wealth of talent coming through. Now, why South Africa? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's such a great sport, and uh, yeah, I've kind of lost touch with it a little bit over the last few years. But uh, I don't well, know. your wallet will be glad. <laughs> so yeah, my wallet has, is very, very glad. Although uh, I still, when I actually had the you know the privilege of going to watch your own horse and actually be at the track and 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 go down and just see it go down to the stall, starting stalls, and then and then finish a race, even if it was seventh or eighth. Uh, for me, that was the best part of it. I didn't really care yeah. about the betting afterwards. No, it's fantastic. Yeah. But tell me, can I ask you a question? Yes. Your radio station, is this on the internet or what? Yes, it is. It's online at balls.co.za. Okay, and no, I, I heard all about it. Yeah. So am I, am I going to get the breakfast show or what? <laughs> send, send your audition tape, Martin. Will that? <laughs> Mart, uh, Mart, I just wanted to ask you how you got the name Lucky Jockey, the nickname. Oh, gosh. You guys may remember there was a fantastic broadcaster, uh, Jeffrey Atkins. Um, he went to Australia from uh, from Zimbabwe, um, and he and I used to do the Mutt and Jeff show. Okay. And it was it was very funny because he, he was the classical guy, and he wanted all the operatic music and, and never talked about sport, hated it. One day he had to introduce me uh, doing 
some international hockey match and you say, well, and now for the hockey, let's join Cocky Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be the end of that for me wherever I go. Even little kids say to me, hello, Cocky Lucky. Cocky Lucky. <laughs> uh, I mean, you guys used to have so much fun with the cricket broadcast as well when you were anchoring that and uh, in, in, with Trevor around there and the guys mm-hmm. in as well. I mean, you could just see it was a, you guys were actually having a, you were making it a, a sort of entertainment. It wasn't just the hard sort of analysis and stuff. Well, look, that's what we, yeah, you know, well, that's what we also did in racing, and the philosophy behind that. I went to, to the guys at Gravel and said, "Look, what we do in cricket is we we bring in people who have had international experience. It's one thing to have Martin Locke saying, well, you know, the wicket's a bit slow, yeah. but you actually want to hear Gary Kirsten say that when he comes out. Yeah. So I said, look, we must have the top players. It's no good having just guys like us. And so we've done that in horse racing and most sports, and that's what I want to do now is bring in more and more top jockeys who have the feel for the horses, for the going and, and, and the timing and all that. And, and, and that's all very, very exciting, and, and it's working. Fantastic. Is McCurdy still uh, doing the business? Yes, McCurdy, uh, he's, he's, they call him the admin manager, but he's one of the presenters. Admin manager? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, looks like, he looks after all these boys, but he's asked me now to help him because I'd, I don't think they want to take too much from an Australian. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Gear, you can always be Australian, up. mate. Yeah, tell him, <laughs> tell him, uh, tell him, say thanks a lot for um, for contacting since he's been up in Joburg. <laughs> I'll do that. All right, but Listen, Dan, it's good to hear you. You and too, I, Mark. I must no. tell you, I've thought about you a lot, and. Uh, well done for handling yourself so well in the last year or so. Awesome, thanks, Lockie. And it's, I'm glad. I, listen, I was. Uh, I did hear that there were a couple of uh, you having a, a couple of health problems over the last couple of years. I didn't realise just to what extent, though. So uh, it's great to hear you sounding so good and so chipper with life and things going great, man. Oh, thank you. Ne- never been better. So I can tell you, when That's you get good. to um, bum 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 bum, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask. I was going to ask. How, how old are you? But fifty. Fifty. <laughs> Uh, way, way, way past that. Oh, way beyond that. I was, a, I was a light to you when I was watching and listening to Martin. So yeah. great to chat to you, Martin. Well, All the best. Man. Believe me, guys. If you if you get up every day and you love life and you love yes. people, get on with it. It'll be fine. Awesome thanks, stuff. Thanks, thanks so much for taking time out, Martin. All the best, man. Look thanks after for yourself. Having me. Cheers, Cheers Ed. Bye bye. Bye-bye. There we go, Martin Locke. Yep. Whatever the hell happened to Martin Locke? Now you know. Mm. He's uh, still very much involved with horses. <laughs> Yo, that's it, eh?